Today, we're going to be putting together the RepBox 2 from RepCord. My name's Jim, and this is The Edge of Tech. So like I said, today we're going to be putting together this RepBox 2 that came straight from Pooch at the RepCord booth at Earth. And we had a lot of fun at Earth. Uh, there's a really good interview with Pooch coming up. It's going to be released right before this video, so stay tuned for that. Also, full disclosure, I did buy this rep box myself, but Pooch threw in some extras that you'll see later in the video, including those really sweet side panels that I've been showing on the live streams. So stay tuned. We're going to get straight into it. We're also going to follow the uh, RepCord Dozuki instructions, and I'll put those in the description below. We're going to make video clips for that website as we go with this video. So let's do it. All right, the first thing you want to do is called stage zero. You want to lay out everything you have and make sure it's all here. They really do good about identifying all the pieces and making sure that you have them all. There's uh, bags of parts, there's panels, there's uh, seals if you got a seal kit, there's the printed parts or handles. Um, if you did not get the printed parts or order the printer parts, make sure you print them ahead of time. Um, you just want to make sure you have everything ready to go before we start. There are a couple tools needed. You'll need a scissors, a Phillips head screwdriver, um, a hobby knife or a razor. Um, you'll also need some Windex or some uh, cleaner and a needle nose pliers. So step two, after we have identified everything, is to dry fit your box. And we need to figure out exactly how you want to lay out your box. If you want the holes in the front, if you want the holes in the back of the box, um, this is the time to figure that out before you get it all together and realize you don't want it like that. This one right here is your rear panel, and this is number one. Um, so this is going to be the back of the box. So these are your uh, bottom and your top panels. These are your side panels and we're gonna be using um, one of these as well, and this is for the front. So what I'm gonna do now is dry fit the box like it says in uh, step two. Here's what I like to do. I'm gonna lay a panel down like this, Then I'm gonna take the bigger panel here, which is the back of the rep box, and I'm gonna set it right there. Then what we need to do is decide which um, way you want your exit holes to be. In my case, I want the bottom to be in the front and the top to be in the rear. So I'm gonna take one of the panels here and this is the bottom of the rep box. You can tell that by this cutout here in the bottom of the panel. And like I said, I want the bottom to be in the front of the rep box. So I'm gonna take this and slide it into the slots like that. So if I turn it this way, you can see the holes are up front. I'm gonna do it the opposite way on the top. I would rather have holes in the back. So what I'm gonna do is take my panel, slide it in, and as you can see now, right here, holes are gonna be in the back on the top. And they'll be in the front on the bottom. Then what we need to do is take our last piece here, and that goes in diagonally right there in the front. We need to take the last panel, the side panel here, and we need to get all of the holes matched up and pop them all in. And that can be easier said than done, but it's pretty simple if you do it this way. Um, maybe there's better ways. I know uh, Pooch and the gang do a ton of these, so there's probably better ways to do this. But for me, by myself, this was the best way I found to put this together. Now what we have is a staged uh, rep box. Um, in the top of the back here, I have holes. And in the bottom of the front, I have the exit holes there. And this completes step two. So for step number three, we're gonna do the exit and base panel. We're gonna grab one of the rear exit panels. It is one of the ones with the hexagonal holes in it here. And we're gonna take three of our screws, one, two, three, and put them in there. So this is what you got. Then what we'll do is we'll take parts bag H that has the seal, and we will open the seal up. 
and you want to stretch it out a couple times like that. So you'll take your seal and the little plastic punches are still in them. So those will need to be punched. And if you went through the beginning um, part of this, it asks you to do that first. We'll take this and we'll put the, we'll put the holes right through like that. And that'll get the seal on there. And we want the long part, the flappy part, to be hanging off. So you don't want it to be hanging way up here. So when you're done, it'll look like this from, from this side. You'll see um, the three screws, the seal here, and from the back, um, just like that. Grab the base panel that you decided to be the front of the box. So in my case, I wanted the holes to be in the front of the box. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our base panel here and we are gonna flip this over and we're gonna push our screws in through those screw holes and that will sandwich that seal right between the two panels. We're sandwiching, sandwiching the plastic here between the panel we just prepared and our base panel, so the bottom, and in some cases, these hexagonal holes will have nothing under them. If you decided you wanted this the opposite way where your holes are back here, these hexagons would be empty underneath these, but that's okay, we're gonna use those later. All right, so the next step uh, would be step number four, would be adding the square nuts to the mega brackets. So if we take all the brackets and position them like this, there's six of them, and we need 12 of these square nuts, okay? Um, the first thing we're gonna do is take the square nuts and push them into these top holes. So we'll go through one. You can do this with um, a needle nose pliers. You can do that with your finger. You can, I, I like to use a flathead and just push them down a little. So what we're gonna do is go through and push the top nut into each one of these. And we're just gonna take it, push it into here. And then what you'll be able to do on the back side is see in this hole here, you'll be able to see all the way through it if your nut is all the way down. Once we get that done, we're gonna to go to the hole directly under this. So this is where we pushed it in. We're gonna to go to the hole directly under that, which will be this top one here. And we're just gonna take another nut and push it into that top one. That leaves us with a square nut in this slot. You flipped it up square nut in this slot. So on four of them, what we need to do is push the front nut in here too. So we have one here, one there. Then if we spin it, one, one here. We're gonna do that on all of them. Uh, like I said, on four of them, only on four of them, we're gonna do this top one because that'll be our corners. So we got all of them in and I either did them all right or all wrong and we're gonna find out shortly. <laughs> Um, so four of them, as you can see, have the nuts pressed into the front. Those are going to be the corners. All of them are at the top here. And if we flip this around, there's nothing on that side. And there's um, all across there. So I believe we got all these in the right orientation. And we're going to move on to the next step. Now step five, the exit and base panel bracket install. And it's at this point I realized that uh, a couple steps ago, I put this on backwards. So the finished side with the hexagons and our seal here should be on the honest, unfinished side of our base panel. So if you flip it over and look at it from this side, you'll see it's finished here. You have your holes. In my case, you have your holes and your screws right here. So make sure when you're pressing um, this panel on in the earlier steps, that you get it, uh, push it in through the unfinished side. Then what we're gonna do is take another panel, um, same thing, and we are gonna put it right there. So we're gonna throw our three screws in here just like we did on the other uh, panel that had the seal on it. So we will push our screws in, maybe. So we will take and push our screws in. So now what we have is um, the, the panel on here with the three screws. 
We have this one that we put on earlier that has that seal here. We're gonna flip that over. Next, we take the pieces we did in the last step and we're gonna use them and install them uh, on this board. So the two that do not have the center bracket are gonna go here and here. The corner ones um, that have the middle piece here are all gonna go in your corners. So you want to take a screwdriver from the other side and you want them all facing in. They'll look just like this when we get them all screwed in. So now you got all six of these on. Remember the ones with the nuts are in the corners here. Um, then we need to take the heck, the last one of these with the hexagonal holes in it. And what we need to do with that is we need to put it uh, down underneath the plastic film, that seal we created earlier. How we're gonna do that is we're gonna push three screws up through it. Now I've done this a couple times because I screwed it up a couple times. So I, I just wanted to make sure we're getting this right. So I'm refilming this. So if the holes look like there's been something in them already, there was. So what we do is we take the hexagonal piece, we put the three screws in it here. We push our plastic down over in the screw holes. Then we take the uh, last piece here with the round holes. In my case, the round holes match the round holes here. In your case, if you had this backwards, um, so the holes were on this side, you wouldn't see anything here. So when this is correct, um, you'll be able to flex it downwards about 45 degrees. If it's not correct, you won't be able to do that. You'll have to take these over and swap them like I did. So then what you want to do is take your uh, lock nuts, throw them on the ends of these screws and get them started. Now I've done this a couple times um, and because I messed up, I scratched up right there a little bit. In your case, you won't have to do that. Now I know there's a printable tool that helps with these processes. Um, in this case, I'm just using a 732nd uh, socket and an Allen wrench, um, actually it's an Allen driver on the other side to, to tighten these in. But so we, we got the these three started, now let's tighten those up. So now we have that attached here and you can see it's about flush if we go this way, but if we flip it over, this is gonna be the inside of the box here. And if we flip that over, you'll notice that I can actually bring this up to about 45 degrees now. If you look down through that hole, you'll see the hexagonal hole on the outside and the circular hole on the inside um, right down there. And that is perfect. And that concludes step five. With step six, they just want us to verify that you can pull this up to about 45 degrees and that makes sure that everything is on uh, properly. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is put our back panel on. The back panel is the bigger panel like this and it has the slots in the bottom and we're gonna put the finished side in. To do that, we need to turn this up and like this and we're gonna match it up to the brackets we had on the back. Now, something to keep in mind um, if I can show you from this angle, something to keep in mind that when you do this, it is going to be lower than the, that floor panel. It's going to be lower here than that back panel. So we're going to take three screws, go right into these brackets that we already put on carefully. Um, we're gonna do that with all three and we'll be right back. So the back panel is on and as you can see, there's a lip on the bottom and that is by design. If you look on the inside, this is what we have. This is your uh, back panel here and it's the finished side. This is gonna be the inside, the bottom of the box. So the next part of this is we need to make five more of our little brackets here. And this is where you need to make a decision. If you are gonna mount this to a wall, uh, you need to put these brackets on different. If you're gonna not mount this to the wall ever, then we'll do it a different way. So what I mean by that is if you're gonna mount it to the wall, you want these brackets to be in this orientation, okay? So you want to put your nut, you wanna put a nut in um, this top one 
and you want to put a nut in this top one. If you want to mount them to the wall, that flips and it mirrors. So if you want to mount it to a wall, these need to go this way with the wedge down because this is going to act like a hook for the, mount, the wall mount. This is purely aesthetic and if you want to ever mount this to a wall or you think you might, you might want to just do it this way. So this will go in here like this and then the wall mount will slide under and get screwed in here. So something to think about um, is that if you do want to mount it to a wall or you think you might want to, um, then mount it like this. If you're never going to mount it to a wall, turn it around and mount it like that. So I got all the uh, square nuts inside my brackets and I'm gonna go ahead and mount one of these to show you how I'm doing it. So I take one of the screws and I put it through and there's five of them to do. So it's gonna go in like that. What I wanna do is make sure that the square nut is in like it should be. I'm gonna give this a few spins to make sure. And we're good. So. I'm going to tighten this in here and when we're all finished, they're all going to sit just like that. And that way when the wall mount comes, it's actually going to wedge in here and that's how you're going to hang it right on the wall. I'm going to mount all five of mine like that and we'll be back. So I have all five of them uh, on and ready to go now. As you can see, I put them like this so I can mount them on the wall later. And we're moving on to the next step. Step nine, we have the lid assembly. So what we're going to need is the rep box two uh, lid here and we're going to need the frame pieces here and we're also going to need the acrylic right here the plastic so we want to be very careful with this we don't want to over tighten anything uh, while we're doing this because you can crack this and that would not be cool there is a link you can email support and they will give you a discount piece if you do crack it. The first thing we need to do before we do anything is we need to actually take the backing off here. After you get the plastic pulled, what you want to do is flip the cover over and install 11 of those screws in the screw holes here. Now you want to ignore the very outermost screw holes. Those are going to be for the hinge and we haven't got there yet. Once you get that done, you can flip over carefully. There we go flip over the lid and we'll be working from this side. Next, what we want to do is start putting uh, these frame pieces on the back. And when we do that, we need to put our glass in first. So we'll take our glass, make sure it's all cleaned off. And the glass panel will sit on like this. Now, one thing to note when you do this, there we go, that there's a the bigger hole here and that's gonna be for our handle. So push this all in, make sure it's all good in there. Then we're gonna take our larger piece here and we are gonna put that finished side up. So that piece will go on like this. Okay, so that's the bigger, thicker piece and that's down by your handle. Then what we wanna do is take our side pieces here and those are gonna go on like this. And there's gonna be a couple of, of slots, you can see them here, and those go towards the bottom of the door here. So this will go on It'll get pushed in and it'll look just like that. The last piece will press on and now you have the back frame of the door and we're sandwiching that acrylic between. And from now, what you need to do is grab some lock nuts and we'll go ahead and put lock nuts on all of these and tighten them down. Don't over tighten these. You do not want to crack that glass or any other parts. But grab uh, 11 lock nuts and we'll get these tightened in. Now we got all 11 of our lock nuts tight. So this is the bottom where it says rep box two and the top is gonna have our hinge. 
because this is going to open up like this. The next step is to install our hinge. So what we need is that other top panel here. And um, this is going to matter based on the orientation you want your exit holes. In my case, I want the exit holes in the back. So I'm going to use these holes here. If you want your exit holes in the front, you would spin this around and your exit holes would be closest to this glass or you know, to the frame we just built. Um, like I said, in my case, I want my exit holes in the back uh, of the top of this box. And so what I'm going to do is put two screws right into here. And we're only going to do two right now. So push up from the bottom, push up from the bottom and lay that right there and take your hinge and you want the, this is your hinge. Now take your hinge and you have this seam, you know, where the, where the hinge is actually at. And we're going to put that face down and we're going to put it right on top of two of those um, screws that we just put in. Now what we need to do is take this right here and this is our top hinge clamp. And we're going to take that top hinge clamp and set it right over the two screws that we just put in with the hinge underneath it. And we're going to grab a couple of nylock nuts and tighten that down. This is a very important part. If this top uh, hinge clamp is not put in, it will cause issues later. So grab your two uh, nylocks and screw them on so they are started and then tighten them down. Now what we need to do is connect our hinge to our door. Um, and to do that, we need to make sure a couple things happen. Number one, we need to make sure we're getting, we're centered on here as much as we can uh, to, to allow the door to close properly. Number two, um, these screws that we're gonna use have to go down through the door. So the head has to be inside here. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to take four of them and we're going to push them through where they need to be. And, and uh, all the layers here actually are nice because it helps them hold them in place. So you're going to take four and it is a little bit hard to get them started and push through. Just take your time and they'll go. But remember, these have to be pushed down through the inside. So I got them all pushed in. Now, the hinge needs to be centered on here as much as possible. And uh, in order to do that, we need to look at how everything lines up in this crevice and make sure that it's not you know, crooked this way or forward or back. So make sure you're straight in here and make sure you're lined up. Otherwise, this might not close properly when we go to close it. But once we got our four screws in, one, two, three, four, we need to flip this over and start some nylocks on the bottom. Once you're sure everything lines up really nicely and we're centered on e each side, go ahead and tighten those down and make sure you're completely tight and it's um, as close as possible to that board. Make sure everything's pushed together really well. All right, step number 12. What we need to do is install our handle. If you have a seal kit like I do, you need to break this handle free. So there's some tabs in here that um, we need to break off. So there's three on this side and three on that side, and that's gonna allow the center to turn. Now, once you break these free, this handle will turn. If you do not have the seal kit, you don't have to do that part. Now what we need to do is take the piece here and grab a couple of our little square nuts and they're gonna go in right in the sides here. So there's gonna be one and two and they just push in each side. Install our lock into the door. So we're gonna press it through the front and we wanna make sure that uh, when we do this, that we install it so the lock is locked while the key is horizontal. So I have that up. I got the um, I got the nut that needs to go on it. We're going to spin that down and lock that in. Now we don't want to over tighten because we don't want to break that acrylic. Then 
what we need to do is make sure that we're in the locked position, which would be straight up and down, and put our screw back in the end of our lock. So I'm gonna hold that, you can kind of see, and it'll, it'll hold itself in place once you get a little tighter. There we go. So now what we have is our lock installed, and you can see it on both sides here. So the key is here, the lock is here, and when we turn that key, it'll unlock itself. Just like that. Step 14, we're gonna start installing the side panels. In my case, I have some custom panels that these guys sent me and they are awesome. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that and flip that over. Then I'm gonna take my base MDF panel and stick it right on top, just like this. Then uh, we have a couple more of these little red brackets left if you remember these. What we need to do is push a square nut down through the center of it so you can use the center hole. From there, we reach underneath and push a screw in from the back. And this one needs to go through, in my case, the outer plate, and I'm gonna flip this around. So if you see this, this is the top corner of the bracket up here. Then we're gonna take this, and it needs to go on, uh, on that screw, and it needs to screw in in that orientation right there, okay? So, in this case, I'm gonna spin it on there and just make sure it starts okay, that my uh, hole is lined up, and it appears that it is. So we can actually spin it on until we get to the bottom. Actually, it tightens pretty good like that. And I believe it's gonna be in this orientation. So now we need to install the base and the rear on here. And I'm gonna give you this view and then I'm gonna switch out in a second. But um, what I have is the top of the box here and the bottom of the box here. There's three holes across and two and then two. And this one is important as well. So we're gonna take our base, there we go. And we're gonna set it right into those holes. Now you'll need to turn this one about 45 degrees to get it into the hole that it needs to sit in uh, right up here. So push that down, make sure everything is uh, in. And then on the inside, what we need to do is take our bigger uh, piece here, push this down, and make sure that is in there as well. So if I turn this towards you, there we go. So now this is the bottom and we just put in this piece here. Now that has to be in before we put the other side on. So you wanna make sure you get that in there and uh, seated properly. Now we take the other side that we had and we, and we put the same bracket on and we're gonna lay that right on the top. And hopefully, uh, we're gonna match up all of our holes, and they all should just pop right into place, as long as they're all uh, lined up. And we need to push that one in. So take some time. Uh, line up all of your joints here, and they should just slot right in as long as they're all in the right place. Um, so I don't have this one right. Let's see. There we go. That one. And this does take a little bit of time to go around and kind of get it on. but it will go on with some patience and some trying. So we got the top lid on and what we need to do is just install the bottom two screws. And I got this corner done and I'm gonna work on this corner next. But uh, I just wanted to show you this because we do just need to put these two in at this time and we just need to go um, just until it's snug. We do not need to over tighten these 
If you over tighten them, uh, that's bad for the 3D printed parts. You can break the MDF panel and we don't want that. So just screw it down till it's snug. It's nice and tight on there. And now these two are tight. We need to flip this over and do the same thing on the other side, but be careful. Remember the other side's not attached yet. Step number 16, we're gonna install the top panel and uh, the door assembly. So this is the top of the machine here and we are gonna spread out just a little bit. We're gonna spread out those two top panels. Then what we're gonna do is take our top door assembly here and we are going to get them pushed in and placed into the cutouts. So there's that side. You may have to open the door, there we go. There's this side, and then when it's ready, it should all clump back together just like this. So when it's all pushed together, the top is on. Remember we talked about the top ones I wanted to come out the back here? On the front, it, uh, on the bottom, it goes out the bottom. So then what we want to do is take uh, our screws again, and we have one, two, three, four, five screw holes right here. And we're gonna go ahead, uh, and we're gonna take those screws and get them tightened down, but do not over tighten. We don't want to crack anything. Next, we're gonna put the bottom uh, bracing in, and you're gonna take the long piece like this, and it's gonna go in just like that. And the these slots need to face inside. You're going to take three screws and screw them down and just till uh, they're a little bit, um, you're going to screw them down right until before they're snug. And you don't want to tighten these yet because we need to put the bottom brackets or this, these bottom brackets in. So just get these in, uh, make sure they're not completely tight so it can st it still flex a little bit here and then we'll tighten them down in a minute. We want to take our bottom brackets, put them into the slots down here, and then slide them up until they clip in to the top one. So take them into the bottom, slide it up, match it up with the uh, top one. As long as it's all matched up and everything is in, now you can tighten these three. These three are now tight, everything's in, and the bottom brackets uh, are good to go. Next thing we wanna do is install our doorstop. So there's a screw hole right here. We're gonna push a screw through that. We got our screw through here. Now what we wanna do is install our, install our doorstop like this so these are facing down. So put that on there. Grab a nylock nut and just get it started. Grab the included little tool here. Put that over the nylock nut and use your Allen wrench to tighten this down. Now you just want it to be snug, um, just where there's enough friction, just a little bit of friction on there, but not super tight because this thing needs to move. How that works is this will come up, you'll pull your doorstop out and it'll stop right in the little slot, uh, right in the little slot inside of the door panel, just like that. Next thing we wanna do is put our plugs and exit fittings in. I've zoomed in on the top of the box and you can see the other screw that I uh, messed up right here. It's not pushed down in. I actually have to cut this off and start over. That is, it's very important that you make sure that these all twist in by hand or very light force because if they get stuck and uh, go in sideways on one of these nuts, they don't come off very easily. Uh, I am not gonna use the top um, for anything yet. So I'm just gonna go ahead, so I'm just gonna plug these all in. So how that works is you just push them in and then uh, push them down. So they go in, and then down like that and they'll squish in like pancakes. So I'm gonna do all of these and then we'll go to the inside. Now I wanna put my nozzle fittings in here and then the rest of the plugs. So you can't see back here, it's kinda of hard to see, but each one of them uh, has this hexagonal hole right here. 
and this is the nut of the nozzle. So what you do is you stick your hexagonal nut in that hole, you grab your nozzle and you spin it up in. And that's it. Super easy to install. Um, I'll do one more here and then I'm gonna figure out where they all need to go. Now, until I really get filament in the box and, and figure out exactly where I want them, then um, you know I won't know. But I'm just doing this for the video. So you, I stuck my nut in the back, grabbed the nozzle, turn it up, and tighten it. And that's it. As you can see, I installed them all. I just did all six because I'm not sure what I want to do yet. And I put plugs in all the other holes that I didn't use. Uh, it's super easy to do this part. It only takes a few minutes and uh, we're on to the next step. Now, if you don't have the seal kit, we can move on and we're completely finished. We just need to do the rollers on the inside. If you do have the seal kit, we're gonna do that next. So the first thing you need to do is take this and we're gonna insert some nylocks into these two holes. And that is a lot easier said than done, but we're gonna make it work. Um, you just have to get them in there in the right orientation. So I got them installed there. Now what we need to do is install this into the box and how that goes uh, is just like this. So it'll sit in there just like that. Now there's two screw holes right here already ready to go for us. So we're gonna take a couple of the screws that came with the kit. I'm going to push it through and connect with those nylocks. So as you can see now I have the two screws sitting here. They're through this and into the nylocks in the back of that. Um, now we just take our Allen wrench here and we'll tighten those down so they're nice and tight. Now it's nice and tight and secured. The next thing we need to do is install the side pieces for our uh, the side pieces for our seal kit. So there's a, a little slot right up in here in the side, and the top rests right along there. So the top just goes right around there like this, and the bottom rests right into a groove right here. Now we have both sides in and it should look just like this. Okay, for the top seal, we're gonna grab our top seal and it is literally gonna sit right in here over the top of these existing nylock nuts. Okay, for the top seal, you're gonna push a screw down through the center. You're gonna go in and find the uh, center hole, which is right there and it's all gonna lock in around those red brackets. And there's two holes in it that will go over the existing lock nuts. Then what you wanna do is while you're holding it, I know it's hard with my hands in the way here. Oh look, it stays. So you wanna take your Allen wrench in the top and just thread a, a lock washer on the bottom. You can grab the uh, little key that comes with it and this thing is pretty awesome. You hold it with your Allen wrench, you can tighten it in so it's nice and tight. So this top one is good to go and we're ready uh, to put our seals on. So we're gonna take our gasket and peel back the uh, covering that's on it. And we're gonna start in one corner here and press it in. Make sure it's tight and make sure it sticks. And we're just gonna come across and pressing it as we go. And when you get to the very end, you may have to trim a little bit out. So it looks like I will have to trim a little bit out, but that's okay. So I'll take my scissors, I'll come up, pull it back just a little bit. Trim it and And we're good. So the top is now in. We're gonna do the same thing for the bottom gasket now. We are gonna go uh, right to the bottom here. We're gonna stick it, come across, and just stick it all the way down until you get to the very end. 
Again, you might need to take a scissors and trim this a little bit, and we're good. So this completes the bottom and the top seal. So we need to do the sides. I went ahead and did this side the same way. I started at the top, brought it down and trimmed it. I have the last piece now, and I'm just gonna push it into the top corner here. and then push it right down on that new bracket that we put in. Now we have a full seal kit. There's seals here, 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 and down. So if we shut our door, you can feel it. Oh yeah, you can feel it in there. Um, now, because I have the, the seal kit, it comes with this lock, and that'll lock it tight, and it really is squishing down against the seals we just put in, and it does a pretty good job. Now we're moving on to the roller assembly. This is all the stuff we need for the roller. So we have all the cutouts here and here, and we have the bags of parts here. So what we're gonna do is pull all these parts apart and start the assembly. So I have everything laid out here. Um, these are our screws and our spacers and our bearings, and all of the cutouts are ready. We're gonna prepare the two end ones at this time. So what we need to do is get the four shorter ones. We're gonna push two through like that. Take two spacers, put them on. Take two bearings, put them on. Take another panel, put that on. Then we're gonna take our nylock and tighten these down. These just have to be tightened so the nylocks are tight and uh, not over tightened because you don't wanna crush any of this MDF that's cut here. Take that key that came with the kit along with the Allen wrench. We put the key over the uh, nylock like that we put the key over the nylock. We grab this side of the Allen wrench and you can either twist the key or you can twist the Allen wrench. Either one works. So that gives you one end. We need to do one more of these to make two ends and then we need to do the center ones. We need to make the center rollers. So we take the longer screw to make a center roller and we push it through. Take a longer screw on both sides here. So now we have that. Then we take two spacers and we put those on. Then we end up with that. Then now we need some bearings. So take a bearing and drop it on. Then we need another panel. So I'm gonna take this panel and I'm gonna push it on Make sure you're going in the hole like that. Another set of spacers, we push them on. Take your bearing, push that on. Then we take another panel and we push that on. So now we essentially have two sets in there. All we have to do is tighten the two nylocks down and we have the center channels here. When you're done assembling, what you'll have is two single end ones and five center ones that are doubles. Now it's time to put them in the box. So now all we have left to do is put our wheels in the box. So I'm gonna take my single and put it on the end. Take the other single and put it on the far end here. And then because I don't know where what filaments I'm gonna throw in here yet, I'm just gonna to toss these in at different areas. They're real easy to slide around, which is awesome. So now that all of our wheel assemblies are in, we are completely done building the Rep Box 2. All right, we did it. We finally completed the Rep Box 2 from RepCord. Uh, this thing is pretty awesome. The build is great. I tell you what, the build takes a while, but if you're patient and you read the instructions, you will get it done. It really takes reading the instructions because if you don't, stuff goes wrong. Uh, for example, 
when you put the little square nuts into the red printed pieces that hold everything together, screw a screw down through them to make sure they're straight before you assemble it. Um, the reason I say that is if it goes in crooked like this one did, this one's sticking up pretty good because I can't get it back out. It is stuck. Um, I'm going to end up probably having to cut it off and then going from there. But in uh, interest of finishing the video, I wanted to show you that because this is a mistake I made. A couple other things I really like. I love the panels. The panels are awesome. It looks so good on the rep box. Um, I did get the seal kit, so I have the key here. And that is really cool because when you tight, turn it and lock it, it is really tight. It came with the seals, as you saw on the inside there. Um, we have everything installed on the inside with the rollers. And overall, build quality is very good. Overall, uh, I think you're gonna love it. If you have a use for a box like this, I would definitely suggest this. Uh, I gotta find a place to put it in the new space and I'm figuring out how to use it with the cabinet I built, but we're gonna do that. I really appreciate Pooch. Uh, I did buy this at Earth, full disclosure, but he did throw in a bunch of things like all the 3D printed parts, the seal kit. Um, we have the wall mount kit, which I did not show today and um, all the good stuff. So thank you so much, Pooch. I really appreciate that. Uh, I hope you guys learned something and as always, keep printing. Hey everybody, if you liked the video, give me that thumbs up. Please click that subscribe button right down here and the little bell right over here if you wanna be notified the next time we put out videos or go live or anything on this channel. You guys rock and I really appreciate it.